Good luck. Alright, so yeah, we get sent to this game. This marks round eight of turning to master. Um, yeah, it was a bit challenging uh, given our time zones. Oh, let me quickly see what they're saying. Yeah, we had some challenges according to match time. Uh, it's not entirely your fault. There are other factors. Heck, I've been a little delayed for some of my matches, so like it's fine. Stuff happens. This will be an interesting match. Um. Okay. Yeah, I got my volume. Let me boost the game audio just slightly so we can hear the pieces snap. Oh, my opponent is playing some kind of central foul rook. Well, they're preventing me from completing my formation. That's what they're doing. Um, in that case, I still think this is the safest square for my rook to be located on. So normally I do get to play pawn 5-5. Five five. Here I lack the benefit of pawn 5-5, five five, but it's okay. Um, okay, so we have to protect this side of the board to prevent this pawn from advancing. Our opponent is playing something very aggressive here. Um... Not sure that I'm a huge fan of what they're doing. Bishop takes bishop looks extremely confrontational. Um, but I don't really need to confront them here. It's just weird because usually you want to build a more solid shape. Um, also, I could push pawn 5-5 five five right away, couldn't I? And really get things moving. Uh, let's, let's play something a bit calmer. Try to get my king to safety, and then argue that my king is safe and yours is not. Therefore, I win. I think that's my argument this game. So we suggest that we might play Anaguma Castle, even with Central Fall Rook. Do I ever actually do that? Not really, but um, this encourages them to push their edge pawn and I'll push mine. But yeah, Anaguma Castle seems like a possibility. I hope I've not missed some orc somewhere. It is said that uh, Bishop Exchange favors um, a static rook player, but that's a generalization, and like all other biases can be proven or disproven, I guess, or isn't always the case. Um, so do I want to play Mino? Or do I want to do something else? Because with this diagonal right to my king... Yeah, I want to... I don't see them pulling off a rapid attack here. I just don't. So we're going to duck into the corner. And have ourselves a fun little game here.
Now, I don't understand this move. Well, from two fronts, one, well, yeah, this is really weird. That, um, I don't get it. If I had a bishop here, I would understand, but this looks a little misplaced to me. So I'm going to promote my bishop. Which is something they, this turn, are unable to do the same thing back to me. I fork the rook, but also I fork the ability to return my bishop promoting it. Creating an invincible castle. As if building Anaguma Castle wasn't already strong enough. Um, we're going to build uh, something more than Anaguma. I don't remember what it's called. But yeah, we have a promoted bishop now. Which means we have denied their rook this file. And we're constantly threatening to attack. Um, uh, but also, like, we should have pretty solid defense, too. This unorthodox to play central file rook opening this hole so close to my castle. But we've got a promoted bishop, so we might not need to play orthodox strategies here. We freestyle it, man. Double check. Yep, yeah, the overlay looks fine. So if they place their bishop to try to counter mine, mine just runs away. And they don't get to promote theirs. So I think their strategy is now try to break through on this file that my silver is on. I'm not sure where I'm attacking other than this point. I mean, this arguably is a weakness, but I wanted to take one turn to shore up my castle before trying something too crazy aggressive. But yeah, maybe I should have just gone forward and snapped this, and consequences be damned. But... Possibly, well, lots of things are possible. And this guards the center, so I can't really break in the center. This rook defends this square, so I can't, like, move the bishop back to hit the rook a second time and really cause some havoc. But a uh, horse, a promoted bishop, is an excellent defensive piece. So... It might be difficult for them to find any attacking move here. Meanwhile, their rook is tied down to defense of the square. So I could consider uh, bring the silver up, knight up, knight takes pawn. While the rook is still tied down. They could consider in response bringing the rook up and forward. So that's the risk of bringing the silver out, is that their rook could come up and around, and my horse could be sitting back here doing nothing. Oh, alright, they're trying to push on the edge. Uh, in principle, a strong attacking idea. In practice, who knows? Um, I mean, they don't... they have a bishop in hand, they don't have other pieces in hand. So, I'm just going to strengthen my castle again, and see, are they actually going to bring their bishop out? Okay, they bring a silver forward, makes sense. Um, do I bring my other gold out? No, I need it to defend this square, because they still have a bishop drop. But we could bring our... well, if we bring the knight out, this creates a hole for a bishop, but I can trap the bishop, so it's fine. We're going to start moving toward their king as they move toward ours. Uh, 
and that'll be fine. So yeah, right now we're threatening to take the pawn, I guess. Maybe. Maybe we're also threatening to move the knight toward their castle. Yeah, okay. They offer this pawn so they can promote. I'm not overly concerned. Um... could bring the gold out away from my castle, which I don't like. Um, no, actually they can't promote. Well, they, yeah, they promote, they take this pawn. It's fine. Um, well, my rook isn't going anywhere where it's currently at. And if I bring the rook over here, I might be able to promote it. Usually that's risky because the square would be open for a bishop drop, but it's not right now. So... I think this is the active place to put the rook while their silver keeps cover over 5-5. Five five. Now if they take, I take, and I'm threatening rook takes knight. And then maybe someday Rook takes Bishop. If they do nothing else, I could take the pawn. Yeah. Um, interesting. They trade pieces. Okay. I think I'm okay with this piece trade. Well, if I want my bishop in the corner, I don't really want that. Um, interesting. Interesting. Yeah, if we exchange bishops, I just promote this pawn and hit the rook. But this... well, I'm not sure that it allows them any quick attack. Um, The whole point of building Anaguma is that it's supposed to defend my king. If it fails to do that, it's not doing its job. Um, yeah, I think this will be fine. Despite all appearances, I think this will be okay. This is not ordinarily what you would want to do, but this is not an ordinary position, so we react accordingly. And next I take this lance, and if they drop the bishop on the same diagonal, I block the diagonal with a lance. 
So that's the idea. This is not where I want my bishop, not at all, but it doesn't have to stay there long. So we're going to get this out of the corner. Yeah, they run away in advance. Um, I don't know that it even benefits them to run like that. But maybe it does. Clearly they want to attack, but want and ability are not always the same thing. I mean, do we just take the pawn? Doesn't feel right. Feels like there's got to be something better. I mean, if we do take it, we could free up the rook to do some center file tactic next. I think this is even better, though, than taking. So now we're threatening the lance drop. And then take here. And we just keep profiting more and more. While also trying not to give our opponent too many pieces to work with. But yeah, depending how slow their play is... Uh, we might might or might not have lots of options. Oh, this allows me to pick the bishop up and put it in my hand again. Do I want that more than I want to maroon their bishop on the edge of the board? I don't know. Yeah, that's a slow move. That allows me to put the bishop back in my hand. I don't know. Yeah, their bishop is actually kind of menacing on that particular square. Can't allow that to continue. And now they have a bishop in hand and no threat. Meanwhile, we keep picking up more and more pieces. I mean, yeah, I lost my promoted bishop, which is sad. But, um... It was necessary.
We'll defend that with a lance. And now the bishop is a target. So this lance will be able to hit everything that walks into the center file. I would like to use the lance on this file instead, but there's just too much to think about. Maybe if I had swiveled the rook over, there could have been some other way to do this. But, um, yeah, I don't know. Let's try to focus on the game that's being played rather than some other game. Okay, they're trying to cover all of my bishop's promotion squares. Um, interesting. Um, yeah, it's actually kind of hard to promote. Mm. Promoting in the corner again. Okay, if I push this rook over, push rook over, uh, it's hard to dislodge the rook. No, we're going to try to give my rook some freedom. So we're going to take this unlikely looking path anyway. If they lift the rook, maybe we hit the bishop first. And suggest they move all the way back here before pushing this. I don't know. Maybe I should have pushed, well, no, pushing this is risky, because I have a knight right behind it. Oh, I see a path forward now. I push, they bring the rook in. I could just drop a bishop here. They exchange bishops and I get a promoted pawn. That's one option. Yeah, there's some fun tactics here, even if they put the rook in the way, which I'm not sure they want to do. They would like to have a pawn in hand, but I deny that. It's not happening here. Oh, I do have one weakness. It's not great. Um... Yeah, we'll see if they continue splitting their castle. They do. Um, これより両読みに入ります。
Oh, wait. Their shape is even more fragile than it looks. Um... I think this is correct. Activating my silver, trying to further split up their position. What I'm undecided on is after they take, uh, if they do take, then uh, do I drop a bishop or do I simply recapture? Well, the simple recapture looks crushing, so yeah, that's interesting. If you have a simple move that works, why complicate things? Right. That's a sad position for their pieces. So I give them a silver in hand. But guess where that's going? We got some tactics here today. So we've trapped a bishop, and now we're attacking it. If I had some more efficient way to attack it, that'd be even better. But um, yeah, this we'll have to settle for. So now we have a rook lined up directly with their gold and their rook. Um, attack their rook so we can promote ours. Uh, we can also promote some bishops while we're at it. But that would be heavier than necessary here. Um... Actually, we could fork this. We could continue attacking here. The rook can't defend everything, I think, is the best point here. So yeah, actually placing this bishop, even though it's kind of heavy, is best because I don't want to push my token to a place where I can't use it. So I want to force their rook into this action. But then I want to bring my rook into this action too. Yeah, so... I assume they're remarking on just how painful this position is. I think we, take, we could take a quick look at what they said. Uh, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> we've come this far. Might as well play it out. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I'm not discouraging them from continuing. Uh, I'm actually kind of enjoying this somehow. Oh, yeah, this is like one of my better attacks for sure. It's just like tactic after tactic is just absolutely crushing. Because um, their attack never quite got off the ground here. Yes, yeah, so they're quite complementary in my play. 
in this case, maybe I deserve it. I don't know. Um, but yeah, just watching this thing collapse is amazing to me. Uh, yeah, we got another bishop. Might as well use it, right? <laughs> So I would like to attack on this diagonal, but it's actually kind of hard. But this rook is promoted, protecting this gold. Yeah, this rook could protect this pawn if it weren't protecting this gold. So we're going to attack the rook. Um, we could delete the defender, as um, Shogi Harper often reminds us. But yeah, if the rook happens to move... Then a knight drop here, followed by bishop takes pawn, also continues an attack. Yeah, let's see what they're saying this time. Uh... <laughs> yeah, all right. But yeah, we'll try to focus on the game and not check as much. Yeah, so they finally conduct their attack. Um, not a bad idea. I have to take this in similar positions. I've not taken it and gotten in a lot of trouble. Um, so I don't have a more immediate threat than that. But yeah, this whole game they've not had a pawn in hand. Which has made it a bit challenging for them to attack. Um, Alright, they take the square that I'd like to put my knight on. I could push the pawn again. They don't have a pawn. Like, yeah, if I'm trying to starve them, um, this seems consistent with that starvation strategy. Or they just don't have a pawn. I mean, what can they do? Okay, now they got a pawn. Um, but I have an edge. Ah, uh, yes, this is how Pawn to Suji work. I had quite forgotten. Um, the silver is responsible for this pawn. So, should we remove the silver? How about that? Just take peace and take a piece and take a piece. And... I mean, this whole time I've been threatening to promote the rook, but hey, a free silver? It will cost me a little time. It will also slow down their attack because they can't put any more pieces on this fifth row. Also, even if somehow by some catastrophe I lose the rook uh, I'm still doing okay like this rook here wasn't going to support the attack anyway but yeah this was my secret aim there was that now um, I have the edge and I can put down another pawn and another lance and other things to protect my king again Um, okay, that's kind of clever. So, yeah, to support my king. I mean, if I have a rook, a rook almost mates. Not quite. Um... Yeah, this rook's doing nothing here. I think we bring it over to this side to defend.
And also to attack. And like I said, if my rook gets trapped, that's no big deal, too. They promote my plan here uh, was to take this. Is that still my plan? Maybe. Um, yeah, I think so. My king can escape here successfully now. Um, they might put a pawn in front of my lance here. So let's actually protect the lance. That way we don't have a lance used against us. And now I think I take the silver for free. Seems like the safest thing to do here. Yeah, let's let's calmly think through what's happening next. Yeah, let's take that. I think we're okay. Okay. I probably should do something about that. <laughs> well, that's the most tempting thing, is to do something about it. But, um... Hmm. I wonder. It's not that threatening, actually. Well, if they exchange their rook for the bishop, who knows what's going to happen next. I have some idea, but I don't know. But it's okay to not know things. Um. Yeah, so if they do that exchange, then I would just promote my rook. Um, I guess I'm a bit of a hypocrite about saying how much I'm afraid of them attacking my rook, and now I allow this. But it's okay. Let's protect our king. And now if they do such an exchange, it's as much, if not more, to their detriment as it is to mine, so, uh, yeah. Interesting. I have a retort to that. Um, there's only one more lance here. No, I'm sorry. They have. I've put both of my lances in difficult to attack locations. Let's say strategically, even though it wasn't. I don't. 
I don't know that I had planned it that way. I want a tempo more than I want a rook here. I'll take the rook. But the tempo, I value a bit more. Oh, that actually hurts. Um, I missed that. Hmm. This is what makes Shogi exciting. That said, if I get a bishop, I'm getting a free rook. But... Um, we don't really need to worry about that, but yeah, if things came down to that, we'd still be okay. But, uh, no, I've got an impossibly strong attack here if I ever take a turn to actually execute it. And I think now is the turn to do that. Well, no, if I drop the gold down here, I can't put it back there. That's annoying. Um, Thank I'll defend the rook. We don't need a rook here. It'll take... I keep defending and defending and defending and collecting all the pieces because they've played a like this is not the easiest 
it's not a trivial castle to break. It is one of the easiest castles, but it is non-trivial. So it's actually going to take one move. If and when I get that one move, I'm going to break this castle. If and when. So we're just playing an extremely, extremely patient game here. Um, yeah, so... Now what? What do we do? Um, Her <laughs> token finally enters the game. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, yeah, I guess my problem is I don't understand how to use knights to attack. My problem is just how ridiculously uh, clumsy I am with these pieces. And how nervous I am overall. Okay, we're just going to put the lance back here. Just in case something goes horribly wrong. Um... Yeah, our opponent is good at spotting tactics. Definitely have to give them that. Oh, yeah, they spot stuff before I do. Just why my attack looks so extremely clumsy here. Hmm. No, we're not giving him a knight. Not with my castle like this. We're going to play a couple extremely calm moves because we are in Bioyomi and I don't want to mess this up. <laughs> if I had more time to think, I would find better moves. But these are okay moves. They get the job done. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. It gets the job done, so you know. Um we've almost rebuilt enough of it. Mm, I don't know. Um Hmm. Oh. Okay, yeah, there's there's ways I can attack this thing. Um So expose the lance and bring this gold somewhere slightly more useful. Where the gold and silver protect each other and make some very, very, very light threats. Um, okay, they finally take our pawn, which actually... Or, I'm sorry, we, they don't take a pawn, there just isn't a pawn there. Um, so we say, nope. Not that file. <laughs> that ain't happening. 
Yeah, I was a bit surprised they dropped their rook behind uh, their pawns. Because bringing it in front of the pawns is going to be hard. If they see, like, they see all the forks that I'm trying to affect here. And they're taking these extraordinary precautions to prevent me from forking them. So we're going to take the extremely long route to get something done. Um, and that's fine. <laughs> yeah, so they've disconnected the rooks, which means both rooks are susceptible to attack. Actually, we have a piece that can move in a diagonal fashion to attack two rooks at once. Uh, yeah. So we'll gain another tempo. Clear out, um, put the bishop on a more effective diagonal, both defensively and offensively. Um... All right, they start to surround their own king. It's fine at this point if we give them a knight for a rook. So we're just going to bring everything. We don't have gold generals is the problem. <laughs> so unless they like make a vulnerable castle, we just have to gradually approach. And it looks horrible, but it functions. Um, so this begins the wave. We're just going to move the horse and the token over and attack everything. I'll exchange this here. I'm going to attack across the rank, and I'll defend against this somehow. It's just such a slow attack. <laughs> Alright. Um, we don't have a gold general. How do I checkmate here? Oh, man. Um, but yeah, at least... Like, I don't know how many things I missed, but to me it feels like they've defended against every fork, pin, skewer, whatever I could come up with. So, I've just had to, like, extremely patiently approach this thing. Um... Okay, finally, we get to land a contact check. Not that there's any bonus points for... Oh, I should have placed the silver here. That's what I should have done before doing this. Because now they get to run away a bit. 
Um, I mean, there's probably a forced mate here, but still, it's sloppy. More accurate would have been trying to surround the king first. So... Yeah, they're going to get to pursue my rook if I'm not careful. Um, actually, the rook's defended. What am I talking about? So, yeah, I think we surrounded the king at this point. Yeah, these pawns are just, like, monstrously hard to destroy. Yeah, I'm curious what they're saying at this point. Uh, yeah, good game. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so that was exciting, in a way. Patient defense. Really, both of us played some defensive moves this game. Yeah. <laughs> uh. So, I know in the teaching ladder there's some expectation of game review thereafter. Uh, I'm totally fine reviewing this, too. Yeah, I think this is an accurate game, despite, like, my attack being crazy slow. I kind of suspected that, too. Yeah, so... Um... Good day. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. That's cool. Good day, night, whatever. <laughs> yeah, I'm not great with time zones, necessarily. Yeah, thanks for game. Have a nice day. Yeah. So, yeah, my attack this game was very, 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 very slow, with one exception, and that exception was this here. Uh, this came before they expected it, so this silver advance allowed me to promote my bishop. And, yeah, from there on out, I played this extremely cowardly style that... I debated whether or not I wanted to do this. An alternative would be... I don't know. It gets really complicated. But I thought maybe there is an alternative because they have no pawns in hand. But on the other hand, say I try something like this. They might take here and might somehow, maybe, I don't know, be able to do something. But, um, actually, rather than that, they might 
I don't know. I couldn't figure this out. Chances are this is just better for me. But um, I was concerned something like this, this, and even though I'm threatening to promote and attack the rook and bishop simultaneously, I thought there could be something here that I missed. So if that's not the case, I didn't need to take this scenic route. But we took the scenic route where I get to take a lance and then survive their attack. And this does not accelerate their attack at all. This is them wanting to build up a stronger center, and I don't know what. But this is definitely not how I thought this was going to go. I thought they were going to like bring out their knight and silver, start attacking on the edge as quickly as possible. But I think they were a bit alarmed at this promoted bishop, combined with the idea that I might promote my rook. Um, yeah, here again, there was just... I couldn't resolve all these threats at once. Putting the bishop in hand is not bad, because it's better than the bishop on the board. But the promoted bishop was menacing all this. I was threatening to play my lance and then promote it here. But that didn't happen. So here I decide, okay, they have an edge attack. I'm taking this pawn. They played this, which I didn't expect at all. I don't like this move. And probably best would be if I just did this. And if they push here, then I pray that I'm okay. But I probably am, but I don't know. Like there's, I couldn't figure out all this stuff. So I just kept playing cowardly stuff throughout the game. But I'm probably fine here. I'm up a lance, but... Like, with the rook here, the bishop there, the silver here, this promotion being threatened. I was nervous, so we didn't do that. Um, we played this cowardly defensive thing, which might be the best move. It might be terrible, I don't know. Um, yeah. It's just so much that I don't know about this game. But... I played just a lot of defensive moves. I was glad to see their gold walk all the way over here. This last pawn push might be gratuitous. And maybe better than all of that might be if I push here immediately. But again, I couldn't figure it out. So maybe it's good. Maybe it's incredible. But um, could also lose the game. So I just played all the cautious moves I could find and just tried to like activate the rook and tried super hard to activate my rook and did it ever get at okay this this is another diagonal gold move um, if you're playing a lot of diagonal gold moves your shape breaks very quickly so that's kind of what happened this might not have been accurate um, this might have been bad. Um, I wanted to put them under psychological pressure, so I played this. And this kind of relaxed me a bit, because, like, having one more piece attacking, to me, calmed me down a bit. But possibly better might have been to promote the rook, and then try to do this rook-king-fork. My concern here was that they might somehow... I don't know. I was in close to Bioyomi, if not at in Bioyomi at this point, and I just, again, if there was something here... I mean, they don't have a bishop, so I really can't panic the way I did. Yeah, like, they'd have to do one, two, three... Well, they can't put the silver and knight on the same square, but, like, I don't know. I don't play Anaguma very often. I guess they don't face it very often either. So it was a fair exchange. But yeah, this might have been the best way to go. Threatening this and that. Um, I don't know how they'd respond to this. And this would give me the freedom to put my bishop wherever. But also, like, where would I actually put it? 
I probably put it right where I did put it. And uh, yeah, this way I was able to take a knight, continue attacking. Yeah, this put some really scary threats. My next idea was to hit this so I could promote here and just really have some fun. Um, so they saw that. Um, so they started attacking because clearly I have this knight drop threat and they want to get their attack off the ground. And I just said, well, you don't have a pawn. So they got a pawn. And yeah, I activate my rook the other way because like now this rook's not doing a whole lot. Yeah, it's defending some squares that are already defended for the most part. So we just take stuff, uh, activate the rook. I prevent a pawn drop in front of my lance and some other tactics here. So yeah, this attack lands, we'll check. And we don't even have to take this pawn at this point because like we're checkmating. Assuming that I find good moves. And I just couldn't. Finding good moves sometimes could be hard. If I could drop another bishop here, that would be fantastic. I don't have a third bishop. So, yeah. I mean, I'm completely winning this, but I just... The distance to checkmate is so much more than I thought it would be. But then when we actually got here, I'm like, oh, well, crap, how do I checkmate this king? I don't know. I think my opponent's playing reasonable defensive moves. So it's actually a bit hard while they have so many generals. They have three generals and a rook all participating in defense. My bishops are off on the sideline enjoying some popcorn. Um, yeah. Not that I have any incentive to move them, because it's going to take them forever to get moving. So, yeah. Um, at this point, I'm like, you know, enough's enough. Let's just take this. Ironically, um, since they... Well, no, because they don't have a bishop, it's fine if I do knight takes. Which might help my attack, but should not be necessary. But yeah, if had I played knight takes, this would not have been feasible, but... Yeah, so what happened here? I missed a tactic. What was the tactic I missed? Oh, this pawn drop in combination with all the other stuff. So, yeah. Um, yeah, I think this rook takes move is actually inaccurate. And it would be better... I was thinking about this, but this might actually be a far better move, just in terms of both attack and defense. It's atypical, but this is not a common position. Puts another piece between my king and my rook. It itself could attack if I wanted it to, and now, since my rook covers this rank, if they want to attack, they have to attack from closer or farther away. They can't use this rank while the rook's here. Um, yeah. I don't know. But, yeah, I was constantly afraid of this. Um, hang on. Maybe I had something better here. Maybe, well... It's not trivial, but, um, yeah, maybe now I just attack. This might be the thing that I missed. And now whether they choose to defend or attack, um, I, or just do this. Like, if they do this, I can react in equal force here. And surround their king. So threatening silver, silver mate. So that might have been the thing that I could have done to quickly attack here instead of playing with my food. Um, also, I didn't have to move this bishop. I was so glad to take this gold and try to 
bring my bishop in to attack their king. Taking the rook would have been fine. Defending my king might have been strong. It's actually... What happens? I left my rook hanging. And my bishop was hanging. Yeah, this is... I didn't want them taking a second bishop for some reason. And I wanted to attack this way. I just couldn't find a mate. Um... But yeah, something... I don't know. Probably should just take the rook. Like that. I'm still threatening this, and I'm still, like, threatening stuff here. Yeah, that would have been smart. That way, if we see the same thing which happened in the game, uh, we don't worry about it. Yeah, I missed this tactic, but here we would have had a rook, and this just completely changes the image of what's going on. So, I mean, yes, they'd have a horse right next to my king, but um, I should have mate here. I should have mate here. If I just say that loud enough, it'll become true. Uh, that's how that works. First, my checkmate. <laughs> There's the mate. That's one mate, at least. Um, there's probably another one. Like, I could probably do this with check. They take here. I do this with check. And, yeah. So, I could have... 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8... 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. I could have read out like 17 moves or something if I thought enough about it. But uh, I did the cowardly thing and said, no bishop for you. Uh, incidentally, this might have been also fine. I just really wanted to try to press an attack as quickly as possible. I got a little hasty here. So I figured, hey, I'm still attacking the rook. That I couldn't see how I would benefit from having a rook anyway. And even after this bishop drop, I'm still okay if I did the first thing that I thought about, which is just place another piece. But I was too proud to do that. Oh, that... I thought... I forgot I had the lance here. Yeah. Um... Yeah, placing any piece on this square would have been great. Even a silver. But, uh, let's see. Also possible would just be drop the rook back and exchange it for a bishop. Or even if they do this fork, whatever. But yeah, better would, simpler might just be any piece on this square here. Um, so silver's fine. I don't like giving them a silver here. Um, Lance is fine, believe it or not. Just allow them to do that. And yeah, I guess this allows them to run a bit. Um, so if they take here, we take there. They could take here, whatever. We've collected all their pieces. So yeah, Lance there probably is best. And yeah, it persuades them to open their castle. At this point, I was also concerned about that. Um, didn't really need to be so concerned as I was, but, like, the rook protects this, so my bishop's hanging, so I don't know. Yeah, so I missed a tactic. A silver drop here is probably fine, but, like, then they can use a silver to attack and defend, it's super annoying. So what we did 
ultimately was fine. It was just unpleasant. It did trap their horse, and then they played this in a strong defensive posture. And I ran away while attacking. And if we had a gold general, a gold general could hit both of these and be defended by the horse. But we don't have a gold general. We, like, never have exactly the right piece to collapse the whole thing at once. Um, so, I don't know, man. There's got to be something I missed. Shogi's hard, I guess is the moral of the story. There are so many tactics, and I played in such a cowardly but successful fashion. So, um, I guess we celebrate that. But also, yeah, that's kind of amazing just how strong this, the pawns are. If there had been more weaknesses between the generals and the pawns, this would have been so much easier to win. And it's just not trivial. Um, yeah, this rook up move surprised me, but only because I hadn't considered that all the alternatives get smashed. Um, so, it was fine. Yeah, I shouldn't have chased this rook. I should find some way with all these pieces to mate the king, but it's not easy. Because, like, vertically and horizontally, they're defending quite well. So, the best I could do is, like, drop something right here. But it's not supported by other pieces. Or if I, like, dr drop a knight here, well, it's not supported. It's subject to attack. Their position's just so fluid. So, yeah. I hit that. And then I start rebuilding. They move the silver out of this. And, yeah, I just finally have had enough. And I'm like, you know, I don't want a knight drop to win this gold and then, like, decide the game. So we're going to protect against this very specific knight drop. Um, yeah, I think this is fine. There is nothing to be afraid of. Uh, this knight move was gratuitous, but at this point, <laughs> I was in a mood at this point, so uh, yeah. Like, this rook I should be happy that it's over here. Um, I've actually not tried katsu curry, or even Japanese katsu curry. Sounds good. Um, I guess what I should have... don't know. Hmm... I mean, if I could just drop a knight on the square, that'd be great. Problem is, if I drop a knight back to defend or to attack it, they can play some defensive moves. Actually, what can they do? So, if they bring this up, I have a drop right here. So they can't do that, so they'd have to defend this way. And now my knight's prone. It's like, I just can't win this. Well, actually, no, I have gold and a knight, both attacking this square, so I can still take here anyway. But it doesn't do anything. Does it? So, because I have a threat to go here, they kind of have to, like, step away from their king. And I should be happy with that, but again, it's still not easy. Shogi is super hard, even checkmating in Shogi can be hard. It's kind of amazing. So... Yeah, I'm just baffled how flexible this is. Um, 
Oh, at this point, I should anticipate Rook 1 or 9 1 with this move. And I thought about it. I was concerned what if they go back and they could start attacking things. And at some point, I've got to stop being so concerned about like every little thing that can happen here because little things will happen. So, like, I could meet that with something like this. So, you know what? Fine. You want my bishop? You can have a bishop. But it'll cost you a rook. I could say something like that. So, uh, but that's, oh, actually, other thing I could consider is do this, saying I'm not even going to promote my bishop. I'm just going to force some pieces to exchange so I can actually approach this king. Despite I don't have a gold general to attack with, so this is still going to be hard. I don't know. But this might have been the faster way forward. Instead, we take the slow route, where I fork the rooks, and I choose not to take... That was the mistake. This is what I'm tilting about here, is this mistake. Because, yeah, there, clearly this collapses all at once. There's no way for the rook to defend this gold. Even though I thought there was, there is no defense. So, yeah, this would just be crushing. Still, it's amazing to have so many pieces on the piece stand and not be able to check, 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 check until we have made. We have to, like, approach the king with some number of pieces and then eventually we'll get to deliver mate once the castle has collapsed around the king so this would have been the way to do it so i finally found it move 127 i briefly considered and quickly discarded this because i didn't see that this attack would just continue so i have like one piece all the way over here i have a gold that's kind of sort of attacking and if I give up my horse that I thought was attacking but really wasn't, yeah, I'm giving up too much. So they defend this gold so they can move their other rook. Um, yeah, here I just am asking for it, but I might have better. There's probably a better move here somewhere. I don't know. But yeah, it's a good defensive try. For sure. Um, probably I could still take it and I drop and drop a whole bunch of pieces and mate somehow. But I felt like this would be more forcing. Uh, the sec. actually don't like it. I'd be embarrassed, I thought, if I did this and if it didn't mate. Because um, at this point I was quite frustrated that this attack had just not gone very quickly. But um, I think it's fine if this doesn't mate immediately. They have nothing in hand. I have nothing to be concerned about. So I could just like pull back this way. Or even continue pinning the gold, but the king's going to move anyway. Yeah, and just gradually move in. There's no response to this plan, so that would be fine. Um, instead, I got impatient and said, okay, fine. You know, we're going to do this. I thought I had a mate. And I promoted this, and, like, I keep approaching, but uh, couldn't find a mate here. Because this damn knight. Um, another idea might have been just push this, hit the knight. I don't know. I'm not sure when that would have been most effective. I guess after they put the knight down is when it's most effective to bring pieces toward the castle that way. Yeah. So they've placed their knight. I can calm down for a minute and just take this and bring this over. and This works. That's just super... I was flustered at this point, but, you know, we got the mate. Finally found a checkmate. With the idea that since this protects this and this protects everything back this way... There's not really a lot of squares this king can go to, finally. So I saw, yeah, check. And no matter where the king goes up or down, this is made.
or even it oh, I guess the king can go here too. I say this is mate, but we get the idea, right? That like if I place all my pieces on the board, eventually I have to checkmate somehow. Um I wonder what the most efficient mate is here. Probably this bishop drop. Um I mean it has some kind of beauty to it. I don't know. Shogi is war. War is hell. It's not that Shogi is painful, but like it simulates war. And war doesn't necessarily have beauty. So this is a win where we just ground them down and just kept grinding and grinding and grinding and finally we had it. Um, still looking for something kind of elegant at the end here, but probably not going to find anything like that. Yeah, this is the most elegant thing we're going to find, and just use all the pieces to mate, even though that's overkill. Actually, wait, can we attack from the front this way? Um, yeah, I mean, it doesn't matter. The king goes back, whatever. Whatever, there's a million paths to mate here, but this rook promotion is probably not the fastest solution either. This might be more accurate. I don't know. None of this seems elegant. I wonder why. I think because they just built this castle that's not trivial to break. And I just... It's hard for me to checkmate. Um, taking this gold might be incorrect. Or not fastest. This might be the fastest mate. And this threatens bishop drop over here. But then they have something... Well, this mates. Yeah. Uh, and if they try to, like, repel this gold, that doesn't actually do anything. Yeah, so this would be mate. Um, that would probably be the fastest mate. Um, yeah, this is probably the right move here. Anyway, um, yeah, hope we all enjoyed this little game here, and thanks for watching.